Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at LifeRay's OSGI container. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the majority of LifeRay is built on OSGI. And so because of that, LifeRay itself has an OSGI container that contains all of our OSGI bundles or OSGI modules. So all of the applications that we at LifeRay create are OSGI applications. In your own development sphere, you can use OSGI and you can use other technologies as well. The choice will be yours depending on how you want to do things. When we are taking a look at standard OSGI bundles, they will run inside of LifeRay's OSGI container. So the OSGI container is not proprietary in the LifeRay world. It is a standard OSGI container. Here we see a diagram of the OSGI runtime, right? The Java runtime runs on the outside. Within that Java runtime, we have the OSGI container that runs all of our OSGI bundles. So very straightforward there. If we zoom out even further, right, we have the OSGI runtime or the OSGI container, which has our LifeRay applications. Our LifeRay applications are built using OSGI bundles. This whole OSGI runtime lives within LifeRay, the web application, runs on a servlet container like Tomcat, and then Tomcat is run on, on the Java runtime. So let's take a look at components and services within LifeRay. We already discussed a little bit about components and services in the previous video. Let's take it a step further here within the LifeRay world. When we're looking at functionality within LifeRay, they are going to be built using components, OSGI components. So everything that we learned in the previous module is still going to apply here in this module. When we're looking at services within the LifeRay world, these services are also going to be implemented as OSGI services, which will then be exposed through the service registry in the OSGI world. So let's take a look at this example here of a portlet. You'll see the component annotation at the very top. We define a lot of properties here and then at the highlighted portion, you'll see that the service that's being implemented is the portlet. So as we've discussed before, that service equals portlet.class in this situation is specifying what is the API at the end of the line. So we'll see that the blogs portlet extends base blogs portlet. If we follow that class all the way down, we would see that the interface would indeed be portlet. That's another review, right? We always have to specify that service equals whenever we're extending something. But if we're implementing something, then that tag, or rather that property becomes optional. Let's take another look here. So here we have a form field, right? We have the component at the very top, a number of properties that are defined. And then again, we'll see that service equals. If we follow that base DDM form field type, we'll then see that the interface that's being implemented will be that DDM form field type. Right. And then one more example here uh, when we're looking at rules in the audience targeting world, kind of the same story. So if you want to do a little digging or investigating, you can take a look at those previous examples, find those classes and then see what that interface is at the end. So this is the typical workflow or the typical flow when we are creating components within the life world. The first thing that we want to do is create a Java class. Pretty straightforward, right? From there, we're going to take a look and see, well, what exactly is it that we want to do? Are we trying to create a portlet? Are we trying to create a form? Whatever that thing that we're trying to do, there's typically going to be either an interface or a base class that's going to help us do that. We need to find out what that is. So that's step number two. From there, we're going to then create a component annotation. So once we create a component annotation, we'll then define the various properties that need to be within that component annotation. Afterwards, right, we can inject other components and services as we're fleshing out the rest of the class. We can grab other services using that at reference annotation. And then finally, we'll implement or override the methods that need to be implemented or overwritten depending on whether or not we're extending or implementing an interface or a base class. So again, one more time, we create a Java class, uh, implement or extend, create a component, define properties, bring in other services using that at reference annotation, and then implement or override methods depending on what it is we're trying to do. So very good. Let's sum up the different ideas that we've covered in this lecture so far. 
So the big one here is that Liferay has an OSGI container, right? This isn't anything special. It's not proprietary. It's a standard OSGI container. So any OSGI application, OSGI bundles that you're creating can be deployed within Liferay. All of the Liferay platform core applications are OSGI applications. As we've mentioned, you can create your applications as you see fit, but in the Liferay world, we are using OSGI. So at the very least, you'll get an idea of how we've done things at Liferay, right? Absolute best case, you're gonna be doing it just as we are. Services and functionalities within the Liferay platform leverage the OSGI component and service model, right? So all the services within Liferay are created as components of the vast majority of the functionalities that we see within the life ray world are also created as components as well. So this wraps it up for this portion of the lecture and I will see you in the next video.